Last time on Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. It's coming through! There's a dragon coming through! Taffy's leading a dragon through the key! I imagine What's going Alec on? comes tearing down. And as the alarm goes up and you have goblins freaking out everywhere, <laughs> eventually uh, coming through in his standard clothes, but with a great sword in hand, Alec steps in. Hello, Alec. Catches a look of the situation. Isn't it magnificent? How are we going to get that up the stairs? I have no idea. <laughs> Alec, I turned into a dinosaur. Zambos, come here. Put your head next to its teeth like we did the other night. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I have a new project. Excellent. We'll get this taken care of. <laughs> and then Numbers comes down. So how are we going to get that up the stairs? I don't know. But we'll figure something out. We'll run the Numbers. <laughs> Welcome back to a new episode of Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. I hope everyone is fantastic. We've all survived the Snowmageddon, at least relatively well. Let's check in and see how everyone is warming up. Zach, how'd you do? Oh, I was fine. Well, no, I, I, was, I wasn't fine. I was really cold at some point, but I had to go back to my parents' house. The worst part was watching my dog shiver. That was oh. that was heart-wrenching. <laughs> oh, man. Almost got some... Uh, Heart of the Angels <laughs> soundtrack going on on that one. Arms of the Angels, my second Oh, Arms well, of the Angels. Um, Jules, how are you doing? Pretty good. How'd you and your puppies turn out? And the kitty? Uh, we only lost power for like an hour one day, so pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, the cat took five steps out and went, fuck this shit. And Bridget tried to fight snowflakes. So like, you know. Fighting. Did you, did you get like uh, some vibes going on kind of like you didn't know that you would be reliving that uh, scene with your warg with your own puppies here in texas um <laughs> uh, i mean you're not wrong but she tried to bite them out of the air so and she's a staffordshire so she her head's probably about as big as a warg's so shay what have you been up to uh coyote and crow hit three hundred fifty thousand as of today excellent uh how much were they wanting to start 18 Oh, wow. So they were looking for, like, basic printing costs yeah. to cover, and then all of a sudden they got printing costs plus the real marketing budget. Yeah, and I'll be running uh, two different recorded playthroughs for two different teams. Nice. Um, Ancestry Guide's out. My name's on that. Yes, we got Check our copy. Check in the editor section. We have, it. we have it in our Pathfinder's Lost Omen section of the bookshelf. Starfinder Society 319 comes out soon. Very nice. You know, when, uh, I don't know if they sent it out to all other subscribers, but in the last package we got from Paizo, they actually included this giant Starfinder poster. Yeah. And so it's this big fold out thing and it's got all of, uh, Absalom Station and it's got breakdowns of characters and like how the ships work. And at some point we're going to put it up here in the studio <laughs> when I make space for it and I get it like ironed out so where it no longer has the creases and stuff in there. But, um, it was, it was a good surprise. Yeah. Starfinder's a fun system. Maybe someday Starfinder will come to Dicefall. Dicefall when your ships blow up. <laughs> Fucking right. <laughs> Sorry, let's fly for your time. Meteors fall when everyone dies. <laughs> yeah, meteors <laughs> fall everyone like good ones at. Oh, n oh no. Oh, yeah, probably, actually. Yeah. That's how Chris would kill us. Yeah, something Sounds completely. He's, he's got a TPK itch in there. And... I do. I've had a, let's be honest, I've had a TPK <laughs> itch for about six months now. <laughs> And it's it's getting harder and harder to not scratch. It rears its head sometimes, but we're able to beat it down. So far. And Sid, how are you surviving? I'm doing okay. I play Vikings a lot. Oh my goodness, you are getting me caught into Valheim. This is dangerous. Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. Did you see that TikTok with the girlfriend who released 50 wolves? No. What? <laughs> oh, I'll send it to you later. Oh man. I saw one where it was like wolves versus trolls, and I'm just like, that seems weird, but... Shout out to the guy who put 50 wolves in a box and his girlfriend accidentally opened it. Oh. <laughs> well, it, it, All right, he, he, his what happened second. was he went, oh, there's wolves in there. And she went, puppies. And he just went, don't get near it. They're wild still. And she went, oh, no. Why didn't you say that before? And she's just running across. <laughs> you just watched the <laughs> FPS drop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, also that shout out to dead funny. by daylight for dropping their k-pop killer soon oh my god there's a k-pop killer coming out for that game yeah, yeah. oh my gosh <laughs> oh no he's hot yeah <laughs> they worked with bts for that it's great I did. which means i'm gonna have a bunch of bts stands in my dead by daylight and i'm okay with that that'll be great 
I don't know if I'm prepared for much of that. The only thing I know I am prepared for is I've read up on the session. Y'all have just returned a gargantuan-sized Tyrannosaurus Rex head. We Rexed that Rex. Oh, man. Y'all get back through the wonderful tunnel after having dropped off, refreshed a couple days' worth of supplies, uh, and you find yourselves right back in the Mwangi at the Temple of Ketephus. Finally now, you think, I mean, unless, of course, you wander around and maybe try to go find the mate of this ginormous T-Rex. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Well, we could kill it. This was... Yeah, you proved But I don't want to be that guy that's just, like, out for blood for, like... I mean, they're vicious, but they're innocent. So, let's just leave them alone. So, refresh me. What is y'all's present plan back in the Mwangi after the thrill of the hunt? We're going to head south. We're going to get our boat. It's technically the Pendergast boat. We're going to take the boat east. Okay. I'm bad at directions. And there's not a compass. Oh, there's a compass rose. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, we're going to take it east. And I think that's about as far as we got. We're trying to clear out the other part of the map. Uh, we know there's a mine. There's a mine around there. So we're not a mine. A mine. Um, I think we're still antsy for some dragon pillars. We've got... One, two, three, four, five? Five done? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got five done. So not counting the one that y'all took care of at the Temple of Ketephus, y'all have cleared out five so far. <clears throat> yeah. Now, what is y'all's generalized plan from day to day so that we can kind of zoom this through since y'all will be covering a lot of ground that y'all have covered before? Um, Nothing it, no bullshit. On ground mm-hmm. or on boat? Ground first, then boat. On ground, standard way we're doing it. Well, can we do double time since we've already been through? Can we? Correct. If you want, you can move two hexes per day, mm-hmm. uh, but then you'll forego any other exploration activities. Well, to get to the boat, we're going to go through hexes that we've already been through, right? Correct. So, so yeah, we'll hoof it. We'll hoof it down those hexes. So that'll take us two days. Um, and is Taffy going to continuously prepare thine cozy cabin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that you can hang up and <clears throat> rock that hammock with Spider Girlfriend every evening? In mm-hmm. our hats by the hearth. Oh yeah, it does have a hearth, doesn't it? I would it hope so. Yeah. A nice warm All hearth. right. So yeah, with it's that... very cute, very cozy. charming soft beds. And then when we warm get on hearth. the boat... Chairs that are a little too short for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> And then when we get on the boat, I believe the plan is to remain with Cozy Cabin prepped, um, but just kind of take sail it along the river. Um, the the boat has a cabin on it, right? It has a covered area, and part of it does dip down below the, the surface. So there is at least a storage area and something that is very much like a cabin, but it's not like the what you would get with uh, most of the actual deeper hole vessels because mm-hmm. it's mostly a flat bottom oh, river vessel okay. yeah. uh, what is built up on top is mostly to keep your goods and gear uh, out of the rain with a little bit of coverage okay yeah. all right so within a day uh moving at twice your speed you figure you're probably about 10 miles away from the boat and then about midday on day two uh y'all get to the boat and as you get to the boat as it's now been about a week attempted to have moored here in the wild aspects of the Mwangi. Who wants to give me a nature check to see how well that boat is doing, having been left to its own devices in the river? This is not Stana. Mm. I need nature. Would that be more crafting? We're starting with nature. Okay. Crafting will be yeah, what we'll that. look at for when, uh, if there is a need to fix it. I'll do a nature I don't. I think I have the best nature, unless except for Taffy, maybe. Um, Are, me. You're, you're primal, right? She's smart. Yeah. So you should have. I have a plus eleven. Oh, mine's plus eleven too. I can assess. We can, that's, yeah, we can. Yeah, plus two it. to his roll, right? Or no? You can assist, yeah. Eleven. Oh wait, no, twenty-two. So okay. And I was. I got a twenty. So. <laughs> so it hurts. Oh, so thirty-one. So as you get down to the boat, you can see that it is still there, but it's not exactly where you had moored it before. 
Um, from what you can tell, it looks like the slow current has been enough to kind of pull it, and it looks like it dragged some of its uh, anchor down a little ways, but not to where you wouldn't have been able to locate it. But one of the things you have noticed, it does look like various types of, of fauna have gotten into that area, and it looks like all of that inside has been tore up by a couple of different types of, uh, looks like some beasts, but at some point it also looks like some uh, sapient species has probably gotten in there too, because you see areas where there wasn't something like food held that it looks like it's also been through as well. Hmm. So the anything that y'all had recorded a value that was still in that area that y'all didn't throw into a bag of holding is now essentially destroyed. I think no, no, we, we threw, we threw everything, everything in the bag of holding. I don't think we had that much to throw in the bag of holding. I don't, I don't think so either, but... There was an extra set of boots that existed there. Um, they can have the boots. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Well, they probably pooped in the boots. <laughs> Um, we'll come across some random sapient creature who's wearing those boots and we're like, hey, you were in our boat. And they'll be like, hey. <laughs> Thanks for the boots. It'll be that Spider-Man meme of just the hey. Yeah. It does take a couple hours to get everything back up and seaworthy. Looks, It looks like there wasn't a massive amount of structural damage done. Nothing particularly done to the hole. Um, it just looks like a crazed pack of Charakas likely went through here. And did a chunk of damage. Okay. So, so now that y'all are at your boat, um, it you have to take a few hours, but you have about another half day's worth of available time and movement if you wish to use it. Now that you're at the boat, what's the plan on the boat? Do you want to move standard speed? Do you want to try to move double speed? Because if you try to move full speed, each day you can get three hexes of movement along the river mm. instead of two. How many does standard speed take us? So standard is still basically one. You'll be able to move an additional hex today if you so desire. So if we move at full speed, are we able to send out our tracking fellows? Our no, flyers? you'll need to to have your assistant with scouting. You'll have to move at the half speed. So you'll be able to move one hex per day. Basically three hexes every two days. Uh, because it's still 1.5 times speed. Mm-hmm. It's just that measuring half a hex is kind of a nuisance. It doesn't matter to me. I think we've already we've already come down this river at least once. So I don't know. Just, at, at least this this little um, y'all are familiar of the river. with this uh, with the banks of this river for at least the next 30 or so miles. I would just like some forewarning mm-hmm. about things. So do you want to move? Do you want to take a more cautious pace? Yes. After you cover the areas that y'all have already covered? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's fine with me. So, if y'all finish That's pushing the rest of today, have a mobile cozy cabin while on the river. That means that you get to where you fought one of the dragon pillars and had moored the boat before at the end of the next day. And so now, y'all know that y'all are coming up to a fork in the river. You have one fork <laughs> that goes east. You have one fork that goes north, and you also have an area now directly to your south that you have not explored before. The last time you were at this point in Juncture, y'all went directly north. So everything to your east is unexplored, and now directly south and southeast is unexplored from where y'all are at. And we're at that fork in the river? Y'all are right before the fork in the river. Can we send somebody out to scout? You can. Who yes, since like we're being scout? cautious. Yeah. We want to send Wimble or Dago? Uh, Dago can go. Dago. Mm. You send Dago. Can, can we send both of them? Mm-hmm. Just because Dago yeah. doesn't talk. He talks to me in my head. Do you want to send your empaths, tiny dragon rider? The empath. Huh? Yeah, let's send tiny dragon rider. And if they see anything like not copacetic, to come back immediately. Is that okay with... Yeah, that's fine. All Wimble right. would do it even if she said didn't really want him to Wimble, do it. So. Wimble has an addiction to dragon riding now. <laughs> do you blame him? How often do you get to, to ride a house straight? I mean, I'm sure Taffy blames him until Taffy takes summon dragon and then rides a dragon herself. He's probably just really happy he gets to fly but not put the effort in. Yeah. Can you imagine Taffy on the back of a ne- of like a red dragon? <laughs> no. She'd be tall or she'd be smaller than one his back spikes. You can just imagine her like with crazy eyes, just like so excited that she's got those crazy eyes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Finally they will give me the respect I deserve. <laughs> oh god. Kill them all. <laughs> oh my god. I can see I can see Taffy go, going Daenerys on a <laughs> I don't want to go Daenerys. 
So nobody Target. wants to go to Daenerys. You Daenerys until... on, some cu- on some cultists? I mean, okay, I'll go a little Daenerys on cultists. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so while y'all send Wimble and Dago south, that means y'all have a hex of movement. Do y'all want to continue along to where the fork of the river is? And if so, do you want to travel to the north side of the fork, or do you want to travel to the uh, south side of that fork? Because they both still go east, but one is angling up north, and the other is yeah, heading further I think we east. had talked the last couple of sessions ago, at least, about the A north mine side. to the north, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll move one hex towards the north part of that, but I don't want us to move too fast because I don't want to get lost from Wimble and Dago. Okay. Mostly because I don't think Taffy or Kaslan would ever forgive Stana if that happened. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Dago's found his way back. Wimble have, like, a psychic connection, though. Because she knows where he is at all times. All right. So with the distant separation that's there, uh, it would take them into the end of another day if y'all move forward one more square. If y'all wait, y'all can hear back from them midday the following day. Let's do that then. Okay. So let's get that fixed. So when Wimble and Dago come back... um, you can see that they're a little bit haggard a smidge. Um, hmm. Dago looks like he's taken a little bit of damage, and Wimble looks like he is um, he's not quite shaken, but it's one of those where he's got a, a somewhat worried look on his face. Uh, the image that Dago sends to Kazalin is uh, kind of, it is a mixture of uh, like the sensation you would do for pain, uh, swirling color as well as bones and a sense of large impending uh draconic features mm, well wow. wimbo comes back and says oh wow well, i think we found their base well that's something at least it's um it's got these different totems that sitting around it and um it's covered in this giant, well, energy shield. We tried to fly over it, but we got too close, and um, it, it, that's why it took us so longer to get back. Hmm. But Dago's fine, mostly. Mostly. Interesting. Mostly. And the dragon totems are powering this? I don't know. <laughs> it's got some walls. It's got this big old bone motif going on. It's um covered and it's centered in the middle of a swamp. Very strange. It's got a bunch of charkas and boggards walking around the borders of it. Screams evil secret lair. Just screams it. If it screamed it anymore, it would basically be like a palace in a glacier in Antarctica. In where? Ice. Oh. Irison. Oh, yeah, y'all call y'all Irison. Yeah, that. What? Like a palace in Irison. Screams evil lair. All right. But, um, uh, whatever you do, don't touch the shieldy. It, it hurts. Very much. Wimble, did you touch the shield? Well, not me. I threw Dago at it. Wimble. What? He survived, Dish? Wimble. I healed him. You can literally reincarnate back in this world if you poof. Well, it's not my fault you didn't get a fairy dragon. Mounts are expendable. That's why they're mounts. I'm not a paladin. He's also not a mount, technically. Well, you're just too big for him. It's not my fault you ate all your meals and veggies. He kind of has you there. You weren't too big to ride him. This is the dumbest argument I've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think for once, I have to agree with Kaslin on that. I don't know what y'all are going to do with it, but um, evil secret lair is in the opposite direction. Well, now we know where it is. What level do we have to cast a spell to disarm the totems again? It's a fourth level dispel magic. And then you have to roll your counteract check. You have to succeed at a level four. You yeah. have to critically succeed at a level three. Yeah. I hate this. I hate this roll so much. So what's the plan, Stans? What? What? I just nearly rode Dago half dead flying up here as fast as we could. That's about the end of my planning capacity. Let's still move on the mine and handle that. And then we'll come back down and explore around the headquarters before attacking it directly. Wait, so they discover the base where on what square or hex it was directly south of the one totem that y'all had dealt with before heading north before right it's uh the the hexes right before the hex with the split yep it's the southern one on the other side of the river so if i'm looking at this right which way does this river flow east or west 
I remember answering this one time. I believe we're going, it flows east to west. So y'all are presently heading upriver. Okay. So the hex that I'm looking at right there. Okay. So we passed it. Correct. So it was just south and that's where you sent your your little scouters and y'all moved northeast one hex from there to allow them a chance to get back. And so we want to go to the mine first and then back? Yeah, uh, that's what Santa was suggesting was basically go up, handle the mine, isolate their gold. Um, and then instead of coming directly back to the headquarters, then go to the other side and scout around the hexes around the headquarters to see if there's any, like, a better way to go in instead of just charging in headfirst. That whole thing is surrounded by a swamp, too. It's pretty murky. Glad we could fly. Y'all are going to have more of a problem. Because you can't get your boat there directly. Mostly because there's like 30 miles or so of uh You know, Wimble, when I was a child, I heard a uh, fairy story that if you took a pixie and you shook them enough, that you would gain the ability to fly. Well, depending on the pixie, that technically could be true. Should we but shake you and find be... out? Oh, that would be a bad plan. Because hmm. then you'd lose access to the cozy cabin. That's true. Also, he would just puke up vodka. That's true, love. Well, that reminds he me. He does that a lot, actually. I hold it down quite effectively, thank you. I hold it down better than you hold down pies and gnomes. I hold... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's my only hypothesis why he keeps getting fed pie. Because they like it so much. But why does she keep giving you pie? Because it's amazing. That doesn't mean why she gives you the pie. What? Why is she giving you pie? She wants his hot bun, duh. Exactly, he keeps a gnome down. That's See, not what that, that just means I was right. That's not what that means. What does it mean? What's the proper word for it? We'll have a conversation later. Ah, I need a rest anyway. Nothing that vodka can't cure. Oh, God. My alcoholic companion. All right. So, y'all want to head north presently? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And while y'all are moving at half speed, what are the... What are the exploration activities y'all would like to be taking advantage of? I'm doing detect magic, of course. And Kaslin? Um, just keeping an eye out, I guess. Okay. Demos, nothing. what exploration activity would you like to be doing? Nothing more than usual, so nothing. <laughs> okay. And Steno, which one are you taking? This makes me concerned that I need to be actually listening in exploration activity. Steno is going to be in defend mode. I would like to play Taffy in attack mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tap three energy and cast magic missile. Just kidding. When y'all begin moving north, uh, Taffy, when you're doing your detect magic, you're noticing that there is a more of a thrumming sense from the ambient magic in the land from this area. You're, you think that you're nearing similar effects of what you would experience if y'all were coming close to a totem. And Kaslin, you notice that there is a break in how the river shoreline mm -hmm. is around some particular areas um, where it looks like there's been various types of moorings done, not like a full official dock, but it looks like there is something relatively close uh, to the river shore, likely just off to the west from where y'all are on this tributary. Um, enough to where you've seen so much unbroken jungle for the past three days, you look at that and you're just like, Sapient creatures are doing something this direction. Mm -hmm. So how would y'all like to approach it? Um, Stealthily. Can I set my hunted prey as a... Not a person, but like a geographical feature or entity or community or stuff like that? Does it have to be a person? As far as geographical entity goes, I don't believe that'll fly. But you can set it towards something like charka or a center claw y'all have dealt with them often enough mm -hmm. that that kind of classification could work for you because okay. you've dealt with them in the jungle you've dealt with them in the keep you've had uh obvious more than fighting words and struggles with them so real quick caslin's like sapient creatures are doing something on on one side of the river mm -hmm. and taffy's like there's a thing on the other side of the river uh when taffy and caslin align their information they it's... believe they're in the same direction yeah Okay. Okay. Mm. Well, I say let's burn it to the ground. Yes, Taffy, we're going to burn it to the ground. Please breathe. Whatever we're handling, if we think there's a pillar, I'd like to handle the pillar first and then everything else second. Damos, are you up for handling another pillar? As always. I'm about as ready as I'll ever be. 
Maybe this one will be another fire one. God. All right. So, Kaslin, what's your plan personally? Well, it kind of depends on what the group is going to do. Um, what time of day is it? So, y'all are looking uh, late morning at this point. Okay. So, can can me and Taffy um, do like a combination of detect magic and tracking to figure out exactly where the next dragon pillar is? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do and your, um, I believe it will be your survival skill, mm-hmm. plus two. Okay. And then Arcana. The, you're just, because you're detect magic, that's automatically. Oh, right, right, right. 23. So as you're going around, you can tell that there's what looks like an, an adapted game trail mm-hmm. that is been walked and used. Um, you can even tell places where it looks like something's been hauled periodically as well. You can see various types of tracks. You see what you think are uh, Charka tracks. You even see what you believe are kobold tracks, though those are particularly old. Uh, but you can see the the spaces of them where the river ground and this uh, that mushy loamy aspect of the uh, the jungle terrain uh, has kept a good chunk of it. Mm-hmm. And as you follow through, you uh, you can be you begin approaching and coming through some of the tree line uh you find yourself after it kind of curved the trail itself curves around a bit uh you find yourselves on the western side of a very large clearing the from what you can tell just kind of looking out staying into the brush even being kind of off side of the uh the main trail you can tell that there has been a large pit dug into the center of a fairly large clearing you see that the the center of this thing is coated almost everything in this yellowish mud and towards the southern end of the clearing it looks like a rough camp has been assembled around that area of the mine but that camp also seems to go around the outskirts of it as well one thing particularly bugs you most of all Mm -hmm. the jungle is silent in this area and so presently it is you and Taffy kind of scouting this area while everyone else is behind. What would you like to do? Mm. Do you want to scout even further into the situation? I feel like that's kind of our only choice on getting this done is to just move forward with it. Okay, but it's the two of you scouting and we're further back. Oh, yeah, well... Uh, Obviously we're yeah. waiting for the rest of the party to catch up. Like, Taffy will whisper a message to Stano and say it's okay to move up or something so y'all are a little bit ahead of it if you want you can attempt to you know you have basically this clearing there's plenty of underbrush around it looks like in some areas where they have some buildings erected there's areas where it's only like 15 uh 10 or 15 feet away from like the edge of the jungle clearing um there are spaces of where you've got like 30 to 40 feet before you get from the tree line to any of the areas so if you want, you have an opportunity to sneak around before Tell Demos me. and Stano show up. Oh, before they show up? Mm-hmm. No, I'll hold no. on. Yeah, I'm gonna... Once they show up, I'm gonna cast uh, Invisibility Sphere and get us behind like a building or something for cover. So this clearing itself is fairly large, and y'all can find yourselves uh, right at the entrance of it. And so Demos and Stano... When y'all come in, one of the first things you notice is this yellowish mud that is around this uh, clearance area. From what you can tell, it looks like they are attempting the start of what would be a strip mine operation in this area. If you want to give me a perception check, y'all can get a little bit more information about what y'all have within your sight lines. I'll also make a perception. Mm -hmm. That's 18. 25. 14. 21. 29. They most clearly got distracted. So. What are you distracted by? About 50 feet Trees. in front of y'all is the initial lip edge of the mine, and it looks like it is done in a spiral pattern going down, and y'all can see only a little bit towards the end, and you mostly see where areas of the rock underneath are exposed, and the uh, yellow foliage has been uh, in the topsoil has been pulled away which is where all that yellow mud substance is um that area looks like it has been uh, crudely excavated probably with hand tools you look and 
about 100, maybe 150 feet to the south and east. Y'all have a, an open pit area from where you can see. This fire pit looks like it is an area with smoking coals, and it looks like it's got a uh, some sort of, you think, reed or bamboo cover over some of the area. So you've got like a fire pit and some sort of cover in one. And then another 60 feet beyond that, you actually see your first proper structure, though sometimes it's hard to consider it proper. This structure is, you think might be a wooden, uh, it's a rough looking wooden lodge of some sort. Uh, Your first glance at it, it's run down. Um, You'd have to be closer to be able to tell too much more than it is a the log house. Then you see on the opposite edge of the mine is a smaller structure as well as a desk and bench. It looks like it might be some sort of... Uh, it's hard to tell without getting closer what's there on the opposite side because, again, you're basically like more than a football field away, but it's about a 30 foot by 20 foot shed of some sort. And then beyond that seems to be some sort of refuse pile at the far north and eastern side. And then at the very north of this open pit is what appears to be a pen of some sort. You see that there's thick logs that appear to be lashed together, uh, seems to be crudely made, and again, you're probably at this catty-cornered angle uh, over 300 yards away from it. Maybe less than 300 yards, but it's a, a good sizable distance. And that's about where y'all can like move around while you're hiding there behind the brush, that you can tell. So all four of us are together, right? Yes. We should probably make our way around before heading right to the center. That's fair. Yeah. Take care of any guard activity first. Would you like to... Circle north side, south side? How would you like to approach? Always go left? Sure. North side. I mean, okay, do. Flip the dice, or flip a coin. Yes. I mean, you can flip your dice. I don't know how well that'd serve you, but... Ha! Huh. Good one. Oh, wait, hang on. Taffy and Kazlin are in Taffy's invisibility sphere, right? I thought we all were. We should all be within She made sure to wait sphere. for everybody to be up with them. To so we're all sphere. invisible then? Yes. All right, yeah. Let's shuffle along with Taffy very carefully. How long does that last? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, let's shuffle along carefully with Taffy. The only time the that it breaks is if we get into combat. Chris is pulling out a bestiary card. Don't like that. Uh, and what's the lowest speed amongst the party? Stano moves 20. Taffy moves 25. All right, so y'all will be moving with the invisibility sphere. Uh, but she'll slow down to move with everybody. And if, if it makes it any easier, we can stealth and y'all can follow the expert. All right, who has expert in stealth? Me. All right, Kaslin, go ahead and give me your base stealth. Oh, wait, no, I don't. I'm trained. What? Oh. Weird. I have a very high stealth, but I'm only trained in it. Never mind. Not put in that skill expansion. Then we're well, going to move very slowly in our invisibility sphere, Chris. But that does mean that I need everyone to roll stealth checks since y'all can't follow the expert. So 15. 26. Uh, so <laughs> it's a 15. I have an 18. 21. Yeah. Very nice. The soft ground is keeping this wonderful new set of armor from making almost any noise, as there's more rustling from Taffy's robes than there is from the sound of this armor moving. But you're covered in this wonderful sphere of invisibility that's moving as you move, which gives you an additional plus 20 on top of that. Now, do y'all want to move... Uh, around the tree line? Do you want to move around the edge of the pit itself? Do y'all just kind of want to move in the center area? Let me show y'all the tree line. The a tree line, map right? area here. Where do I feel the magic emanation? The strongest point is you feel it coming more from the center area of the pit. But if we take care of every of like the guard outside on the around then we can... Uh slowly center into the pit and take care of that. So y'all are wanting to move basically up around the tree line. So Do you want to walk up to the mine? No. So after about 15 seconds or so, so basically three rounds of moving slowly and carefully, 
you'll come up to a particularly dense tangle of trees where there seems to have been that seems to have been chosen as the lair of a particularly horrific and cruel creature for as you look amid the tangle of branches above is an awful nest made of bones scraps of animal hides and bits of rotting flesh and mud yeah oh. do y'all wish to inspect this area further or move over towards the caged pit that is or the caged area that is uh, several more seconds away from you. Let's inspect this one. Give me perception checks. 20. 25. 29. And Taffy? 23. Y'all are moving towards the area, and as you're looking around, y'all hear this flapping of wings and then this feral animal scream happening from the top as something lights on a tree and all you hear is this the rip of hide and flesh as something begins biting into and a local animal it's hard to tell it's a fairly small bit as a black winged pale red i don't like that beaked creature seems to be tearing into a living creature uh I don't like into that. a Soon perishing animal. Are we within 30 feet? Y'all are not quite within 30 feet. Y'all are about 45 feet away from it horizontally, but the thing is elevated up in the treetops presently at about 50 feet as it is enjoying its meal, and you see the the viscera dropping down into this nest that it's made. It doesn't seem to have spotted y'all at this point. It seems to be enjoying its meal. We're still Um, invisible, right? Yes. And y'all, if you happen to have knowledge, religion would be the best knowledge to be able to uh, go at this one. I probably don't know. Shit. 27. 13. I'm not even going to (laughs) bother. 26. So, Damos, you know enough to know that that is a large fiend of some sort. Uh, It is the training that... Stano brings to the table that the type of fiend that it is is a demon, and you believe that you're looking at a vrock presently. Like that. So you know that the vrocks can, like many demons, they have a weakness to things like cold iron and good damage. Um, you also know that they can be very vicious in a fight. They're quick. They're quick on the land, and they're also very quick in the sky. And you're pretty sure that they have access to various types of spells as well. Mm. How? What is Kazlin's range on his bow? I have a longbow. It's 120. I guess I don't have a longbow. <laughs> nope, just a short bow. Okay, what's the range on that? Oh, wait, no, I do. I do. Ah, there it is. What's the range? Oh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't tell me. Info. It doesn't say anywhere in here what the range is. Uh, yeah, I think it's right to 120 on a longbow. Okay. You have the vine arrows still? Mm-hmm. Do we want to have you take it out and drop it to the ground and then basically rush it and fight it? So can Steno get an idea of how strong this is compared to what we are? Because, I mean, this all hinges on me being able to hit it. So if we don't, if I'm unable to hit it, then our shield or our invisibility shield drops. And then what? Then we're screwed. So from what Steno knows, they are a formidable foe. I don't know if that's a great plan. I think we ought to just let it do its thing and then we'll... My it's... concern is if it can fly and it can do spells, that if we leave it alone now, it's going to dive bomb us later. Yeah, but if also if we drop our invisibility and engage, then we're kind of a target for whatever else is in the area. We're still in brush, so that gives us at least some warning. So with y'all presently invisible, it's unaware and it doesn't seem to have detected y'all presently. Yeah. And that makes it flat-footed, technically? Yes, it would be flat-footed to your attacks. So there's a bonus. Um, it's true. I don't have guidance or anything. I Demos, have... is that a you? Do I have guidance? That's some Taffy? I, have. Um, I do have guidance. Um, you have Who am I casting it on? Yeah, so it's flat-footed. Yeah, I have guidance. If Taffy casts guidance, or t- or Damos, whichever one, uh, then that gives you like a plus three to hit it. So I'm going to cast guidance at level four on... Kazlin? Yeah, sorry, Kazlin. Uh, 
What's that so about? yeah, you ask for divine guidance, granting a plus one status bonus to one attack roll. So is it in? Uh, is it flying or is it perched? It is perched. Okay, I don't think Vine Arrow is going to drop it to the ground. Correct. So because it's not presently flying, okay, it would lash it to the top. Of oh, where we it's don't at. want that. Then do we just want to attempt to push it off its perch? Well, the the def- the description of Vine Arrow says. It wraps the target in vines. The target takes penalties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that would I lash mean, it to its perch. It's fifty it feet in the air. We it doesn't necessarily do imply that it latches it to the perch. It, so if vine arrow plus maybe like Dago tackling it may drop it. I'm worried about Dago though. Well, oh, yeah. you could just sh- you could just shoot it and it'll fly over to us. Will it though? Most likely. Is, it, is are these creatures sentient or are they more? Well, it's a demon, so it's sentient. Okay. So, I mean, I wouldn't, like, rush after a group of... Yeah, but you're not an evil, chaotic fiend. Yeah. Yeah, but something that's sentient is not going to put itself in a situation where it can't win. Or it doesn't, it doesn't think it. doesn't know that. We're just kind of making a lot of assumptions here. And this is the first time we fought something like this. I just think it would be best to get it taken care of now, so we don't have to deal with it when we're attempting to do all the other shit. Because Taffy detects magic like a dragon pillar. Yeah. So I don't want something come flying in on top of our asses. What if... Taffy magic missiles it? I was going to say, what if we draw it to the area of the dragon pillar and let the dragon pillar... No, because I'm going to say it's probably an ally if it's this close. Maybe. So, again, I I, I don't want to deal with something on top of the dragon pillar. Yeah. So I think it's best to to get its attention and fight it now and then keep going around the camp. Okay. So you want to shoot it with a regular arrow, or do we want to shoot it with vine arrow? Mm, how many vine arrows? Because if we just want to do regular eight. arrow, that's not a big deal. Don't we have some silver arrows too, or cold iron arrows? Do we? I don't. I thought we had some cold iron arrows. No, I've you got have a some cold, cold iron weaponry. Yeah, I've got a cold iron dagger, and you've got a cold iron uh, shifting whatever the fuck. What do you have? Cold iron that's shifting. Uh, it's like whatever I want it to be. Uh, like a one-handed. Yeah, like a one-handed weapon, like a sword. What if I borrowed that? Can uh, I? And have it turn into like an arrow, or no, have it turn into one of my swords, like a dueling sword. Yeah. Because do you need to invest it? Oh, uh, I don't think I need to attune or invest. Hold on. Do you have to invest a standard tricking weapon? I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a magical weapon. I don't remember what Taffy has. It's not. Um... There's nothing against Taffy, but I have a better hand- chance of hitting it. Uh, yeah, it's just a plus one striking, shifting, cold iron dagger. Which, but because it's shifting, it can shift into anything. It just still does dagger damage. Yeah. Oh, it does still do dagger damage. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's not going to shift its weapon die. Never mind, that may not. Shoot it, get it over here, then we'll wail on it. Okay. All right, I'll do that. All right, everyone, roll perception for initiative! Oh, that shit is a four, so 15. Jesus Christ. I don't think I've rolled over an 11 today. I... Mostly have rolled around a five or less. I just critically failed that. So did I. It's initiative. Okay. All right. I got a 25. We still got a surprise round though, right? Uh, Not a full round. Kazan, you're going to get your strike off. And then after the strike goes off, we'll fall into initiative. All right. Well, could I say that as he's been preparing his arrow, I've also been preparing a magic missile? Well, you guidanced him, right? Oh, right. right, you right. Never him, mind. And then, because after you guidance, he's got a strike. Oh, okay, no. so I will. Then I will say Stano has her sword out. Somebody give me a d20. You need a different d20? I'm going to borrow, hopefully, somebody with some better luck d20. All right. And so this is going to be with a plus three, right? Correct, but I need everyone's initiative here. Oh, so Taffy, uh, what is your initiative? 15. Kaslin. 16. Demos. 25. And Stano. 17. Wow. Okay. That's sad. All right, here goes. Oh, Jesus Christ. What you roll? Here, just just take it. Ah, thank you, Caslin. So, how bad was that it roll? It was a two. Oh, a two, a two. Well, here's hoping for at least a three. A four? <laughs> Woohoo! I gave you, you twice the power. It. Oh, God, that's a 23. So, Rough. with your 23... You fire your arrow out towards the Vrock, and even with it being flat-footed to your attack, Ugh. it sails just above its head from the perch as the wind carries it just lower. And it now, as your invisibility dispels, it turns its attention towards you. 
And that's when, now that you're about a hundred or so feet away, because three, four, five right triangle from where y'all are at, 50 feet up, Mm -hmm. 45-ish feet away. um, Yeah. Uh, It turns its head towards you, and in your your heads you hear, Delivery. Fantastic. Stanley's going to snarl back in her head at it in in Vernal. And it listens like, Oh, you'll play well. As it casts Dimension Door as an innate spell. No! No! (laughs) 